you've probably seen custom workflows in the workflow editor, but perhaps not explored the use case for them. Let's jump in and I'll show you a very quick use case that I tend to use them for. So for my landing page, as an example, we have a sign up button. We have a create your free account button. Then as we scroll down, we have create your free account. So we have multiple buttons of creating a free account or creating an account at BuildCamp. And those workflows all do the same thing. I've knocked up a very quick landing page just to show you what it looks like or what it would look like in the workflow area. So if I start edit workflow on the sign up button, here's just an example of perhaps what a sign up workflow could look like. So we could sign a user up. We could then create some data, just ignore what this data is. Uh, we could then make changes to the data, perhaps send them an onboarding email, schedule an API workflow to change data at a, at a later period. But essentially all of the buttons on this landing page do the same thing. Here's get started, which is another way of saying sign up. Get started for free, sign up. So in effect, what we have is three identical workflows across these buttons. So this is where custom workflows come to fruition, is we want to create the minimum amount of workflows on our page, okay? The minimum amount always. So instead of doing this, having three identical workflows, and on the Build Camp landing page, I think we have about seven buttons to sign up. What we do is we go to custom and say, create a custom event. This could be called the sign up flow. Okay. And this is where we would sign the user up and just go through all of these workflows. Sign them up, create some data, make changes to the data, send onboarding emails, perhaps send myself an email as well, or Slack notification, schedule an API workflow to run some backend services or some backend tasks. So this custom workflow will now replace all of these. Okay, this is a custom workflow. So when someone clicks sign up button, instead of creating all of those steps again, we're quite simply going to go to custom events and trigger a custom event. And here Bubble has already connected the sign up custom workflow because we only have one. So this is much smarter and far less effort and a way to keep our workflows to the minimum. Trigger a custom event and trigger a custom event. And here they are here. What is the other good thing about custom events? Well, it's a single workflow to make our updates. So if we wanted to change something about the sign up flow, just change it in one location. So kind of think about custom events almost as reusable workflows to a degree, much like reusable elements. And we know how important reusable elements are. Often a custom event will pertain to particular data. Okay, so that's where you'd set a type of thing and feed it through. But in this instance, it doesn't. So you can just set it to user. Otherwise, Bubble might throw up some issues. There are tons of cases for custom workflows. And as you're building out your app, think of ways that you can use these custom workflows to reduce the amount of tasks you have on a page. Another use case I have for custom workflows is basically a payment workflow. And you can set conditions to only run these custom workflows when certain conditions are met. So not so scary after all, and I would suggest that you hop into your app after this tutorial and look at where you can create custom workflows to just reduce the amount of workflows on your page. So I hope you enjoyed that.